Hey everyone, in this video, I'm going to address the matter of adaptive or dynamic voltage overclocking. In my original overclocking video on this channel, I showed you how to overclock the Core i7-8700K using a manual or constant V-Core value. And while that is a tremendously solid way to overclock, there were a lot of questions and comments about adaptive or dynamic voltage overclocking. What we're essentially going to be doing here is dialing in a CPU overclock that will allow the processor to still behave as it would with stock settings, where it'll boost up to high frequencies when it's needed, but also drop down to lower ones and drop the V-Core down with it when it isn't. The main difference being that we're going to overclock or increase that maximum turbo frequency, all while allowing the V-Core to scale up with it when needed to maintain stability. Let's do this. The first thing you should do before attempting to overclock is make sure you're running the latest BIOS version for your motherboard. Head on over to your motherboard manufacturer's website and if necessary, grab that latest version. Next, go ahead and enter the system BIOS and just do a once over and make sure everything is set to its default value, paying particular attention to all of the voltage settings. Once you've reviewed and confirmed your stock settings, go ahead and enable your XMP profiles for your RAM. At this point, I will usually reboot the system just to make sure the XMP profile loaded properly and to rule out any instability issues with the RAM. And once you've done that, get back into the BIOS and it's time to start dialing in your CPU overclock. The first thing you're gonna need to do is define your starting point. What frequency are you gonna target to get this overclock going? For me, I'm just gonna shoot right for a 4.8 gigahertz overclock right away. So I'm gonna go into my frequency settings, and that means if I want 4.8 gigahertz, I'm gonna set a clock multiplier of 48. And it's very simple the way that works, it just takes the base clock, which is 100 megahertz, and multiplies it by 48 to result in my frequency of 4.8. Gigahertz. Next, head on over to your CPU core voltage control page. This is the section of the BIOS where we're going to enable and configure our dynamic or adaptive voltage control for our overclock. Now I'm using a gigabyte motherboard and it doesn't really matter what brand motherboard you're using. Um, all of the manufacturers basically have the same settings. The only difference being sometimes they refer to them a little bit differently. So it might be called adaptive voltage on your board. On mine, you can see gigabyte likes to call it dynamic. It's the same thing. So I'm gonna need to make sure I can access the CPU core dynamic voltage control because right now it's grayed out and there's no way for me to select it. So in order for me to do that, I need to change my CPU V core from auto to something else that will enable that setting. And the way you do that is you use the page up and page down keys. So I'm gonna switch this to normal. And as you can see, I now have the ability to access that setting and configure it. So you're gonna to need to pick a starting value. I'm shooting for 4.8 gigahertz, so I'm gonna go with something a little bit higher. If you're aiming for something lower as your target overclock to get things started, you don't need to go this high, but pick a number below this. I wouldn't go any higher than this to start because you're gonna to need to monitor the voltage and the temperatures as you go. So to get things started, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a voltage of 0.025. So what this is going to do is allow the voltage to scale up with that turbo frequency of 4.8 gigahertz that I dialed in, but not just scale up as it normally would with the CPU at stock settings, but it's going to over volt it a little bit. That's why it says plus 0.025. But, and this is a very important thing, don't think that you're just gonna take your existing stock voltage, in my case it's showing 1.185 volt, and then add 0.025, and that's going to be your max voltage, because that is absolutely not how it works. And people mess this up all the time because they think that's how this works. This is a little bit more tricky, and that's why the other overclocking video, I decided to show a manual overclock where you set a constant value because you know what you're getting more or less. This is subject to fluctuations. It's gonna jump up, it's gonna jump down, and as you're gonna see later when I boot into Windows, that is not the resulting frequency. You can't just take the stock frequency, add the 0.025 and think you're gonna get the voltage. It's gonna shoot much higher than that, and you're gonna see that shortly. So be careful, don't start with any V-Core too high for your dynamic voltage. So now that we've got our initial settings dialed in, that's actually all I'm going to change. I'm gonna go ahead and save this and boot into Windows. Once you've reached the Windows desktop with your initial overclock, you're gonna to wanna to launch your hardware monitoring software. I like CPU ID hardware monitor. I will put a link to it down in the description of this video if you wanna use that. I think it's a great tool, it's free. Go ahead and download it. Launch that so that you can see what voltages you're actually getting and also monitor your temperatures at the same time. 
So here are my settings. You can see the V core jumping around here. It hit a maximum of 1.320 volts, which is a number that is very different than the stock plus 0.025, just like I mentioned when we were dialing in our overclock. So that's what you need to keep an eye on, what this max voltage is going to hit. Right now it's gonna jump around based on the load on the CPU. You can monitor your temperatures in this program as well and also the package power so you can see how much power your CPU is drawing now that you've overclocked it if you're concerned about power efficiency. Scrolling down the page a little bit, we can see that the clock speed that we dialed in of 4.8 gigahertz actually is being reached and the CPU has dropped as low as 799 megahertz when there isn't much load. It goes without saying that when you're overclocking, you need to keep a close eye on temperatures at the same time. So scrolling up a little bit here, here's all the information for your CPU. These are the maximum temperatures that have been hit since we've run hardware monitor when we booted into Windows. You can see we hit 62, 63 was the hottest core and the minimums as well. And this is a real time view of what the CPU is doing right now and what temperatures we're running. So this is a good tool to keep an eye on. From here, I recommend stress testing, launch Asus RealBench or Prime95 something that's really gonna stress and test for instabilities with this overclock. If you're not someone that's a fan of those really stressful programs, then you can use the real world usage type of tasks, basically encode some video, play some games, do whatever you do with your computer and just basically do that for a while and observe temperatures, observe if you see any instabilities or any issues and stuff like that. If there are any instabilities, you jump back into the BIOS and you bump up that voltage just a little bit. I'm talking 0.005, go back in, check all the temperatures and everything, the voltages again. If you're satisfied and you have some thermal headroom, run your stress test again and see if that made it stable. If it didn't, just keep going through the process until you run out of thermal headroom. And if you started with a lower frequency, at this point, if everything was stable, you can basically keep that voltage the same and boost the frequency and then go through the same iterative process again until you maximize that clock speed and find the lowest amount of voltage that will keep it stable. That is how you overclock with adaptive or dynamic voltage. So that's basically it, dynamic voltage overclocking. I hope this video helped clear things up for you if you've been wondering how to do this and also give you a little bit of confidence to go ahead and try it yourself with your own CPU. Remember, overclocking is meant to be an iterative process. It's a lot of trial and error. Don't shoot for the moon on your first go. Don't say, I'm gonna hit 5.5 gigahertz and dial in two extra volts of V-Core right off the bat. That's a bad idea. That's how people fry CPUs. If you have concerns about your CPU and you've always been kind of wary of overclocking, that's what you don't want to do. Just remember it's an iterative process, put your time into it, do a good job, and I think you'll be just fine. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, share the video around, and we'll see you in the next one.